Hello all. In this video, we will see about non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. In general, uh, analgesics can be opioid analgesics or non-steroidal analgesics. Uh, here we will see about non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs which also have the analgesic property as we saw now. First, you should know about the mechanism of action before going into detail about NSAIDs. The mechanism of action is as follows. All these cell membranes have phospholipids. The arachidonic acid metabolism is responsible for releasing prostaglandins and leukotrienes which are important uh, and uh, inflammatory mediators. So the membrane phospholipids, uh, what happens in case of inflammation or when these uh, mediators are needed? Phospholipase A2 is the enzyme which acts on phospholipids to release arachidonic acid. This arachidonic acid undergoes two different types of metabolism. One is cyclooxygenase pathway and other is lipooxygenase pathway. In cyclooxygenase pathway, prostaglandins are uh, produced as a byproduct, whereas in lipooxygenase pathway, leukotrienes are produced. This is just a simplified version of the pathway. There are many more byproducts and many different types of prostaglandins which you need to know in detail. Now, well, since we are seeing about mechanism of action of NSAIDs, this is enough. In arachidonic acid, that is the cyclooxygenase pathway, the cyclooxygenase can be either COX-1 or COX-2. COX-1 is seen in normal cells, whereas COX-2 is especially seen in inflammatory cells. The prostanoids produced as a result of this pathway are the mediators of inflammation. So here, since it is an anti-inflammatory drug, as you could see, you should inhibit the production of mediators of inflammation. Therefore, you should inhibit COX-2 or in turn either both the COXs or cyclooxygenase in general. So the classification is based on this only. Non-selective COX inhibitors inhibit both 1 and 2, whereas selective COX-2 inhibitors aim to inhibit COX-2 only. The non-selective COX inhibitors are in turn classified as follows. Salicylic acid derivatives, among which aspirin is the most famous uh, NSAIDs and the prototype drug. Paraminophenol derivatives, paracetamol, most commonly used analgesic and anti-inflammatory, antipyretic drug. Pyrazolone derivatives, which include phenylbutazone and azopropazone. Indole acetic acid derivative which includes indomethazine and other drugs. RL acetic acid derivative which includes other famous drugs including diclofenac, aciclofenac and ketorolac. Propionic acid derivatives which include ibuprofen and other drugs. Anthranolic acid derivatives which includes flufenamic acid and mefenamic acid. Oxycams include pyroxicam, stenoxicam and other drugs. Alkanones includes nabumetone. You have to remember these drugs. By hearting is the only way by which you could remember pharmacological classification. You could use mnemonics to help you in remembering the by hearted uh, uh, classifications. Selective COX-2 inhibitors include nimisulide, selicoxib, rofecoxib, valdicoxib, bitoricoxib and etorolac. Uh, you should remember that those ending with coxib are usually selective COX-2 inhibitors. So let us see the prototype drug aspirin. Salicylates are the salts of salicylic acid. Acetyl salicylic acid, the salt of acetyl salicylic acid is known as aspirin, which as I said, it is the post-prototype drug. What are the actions of aspirin? The main function as we saw, it is it has anti-inflammatory action. NSAIDs are anti-inflammatory drugs. Apart from which, it has other two important functions, analgesia and antipyretic. It reduces fever. It is a gastric irritant which is an unfavorable outcome of aspirin. It, it causes ulcer, ulcerogenic. It increases the rate and depth of respiration. And the other major actions include in high doses it suppresses antigen antibody reaction whereas in low doses aspirin interferes with the platelet aggregation. That is it has antiplatelet activity because of the uh, because it inhibits thromboxanes which is produced by the platelet cyclooxygenase since it inhibits the platelet uh, cyclooxygenase irreversibly thromboxanes do not uh, appear in the uh, presence of uh, aspirin therefore it interferes with platelet aggregation so depending on the actions you could guess what could be the uses of uh, aspirin it is a well known analgesic it is used in headache arthralgia and other aches when pain is associated with increased prostaglandin in general aspirin is used in fever that is symptomatic relief for fever though the cause cannot be treated you could reduce the body temperature with aspirin 
inflammatory condition like arthritis rheumatoid arthritis it relieves pain reduces swelling and redness of the joints acute rheumatic fever it reduces it, uh, it gives relief from the signs and symptoms osteoarthritis also you should remember all these signs and symptoms of the diseases are mainly due to prostaglandins since aspirin inhibits prostaglandin it is useful in all these conditions the normal dose is 4 to 6 grams per day or uh, it, is, it is given as uh, 4 to 6 doses per day Uh, and in a post myocardial infarction and post stroke the low dose aspirin is used the low dose aspirin has antiplatelet properties it prevents clotting as we saw earlier in post myocardial infarction and post stroke it reduces the incidence of reinfarction that is it it is a preventive drug and also in angina pectoris it it hopes the prevent it is useful in preventing mi in such patients and it decreases the incident of transient ischemic attacks it is constantly given along with other antiplatelet drugs it is also used in uh, uh, to delay labor since prostaglandin is responsible for uh, since prostaglandin is responsible for uh, inducing labor to delay labor uh, an inhibitor of prostaglandin that is nsaids aspirin is used it is also used uh, in treating patent ductus arteriosus and it uh, in prevention of colon cancer it is used eclampsia barter's syndrome cat rack niacin flush systemic mastocytosis are the other uses local application in uh, cases of inflammation are also used pharmacokinetics uh, to know uh, certain basic points you should know that the drug is absorbed from the stomach and small intestine it is bound to plasma protein the plasma t half of aspirin is 3 to 5 hours the elimination is dose dependent in anti inflammatory dose the t half is usually 12 hours okay and uh, the particle size ph solubility and food all will affect the absorption of aspirin If the aspirin is deacetylated in liver this is the metabolism of aspirin and uh, liver uh, and plasma and other tissues and the deacetylated aspirin releases salicylic acid which is the active form and which has all the following actions which we saw earlier in smaller doses it undergoes first order kinetics in higher doses it undergoes zero order kinetics do you want to know what is first order and zero order kinetics kindly comment below i will make a video on that also what are the adverse effects of nsaids that is an aspirin in general since we are seeing about aspirin as i said aspirin is the gi uh, ulcerogenic drug it, it produces ulcer two main reasons one it does not dissolve in acidic ph therefore it is uh, it causes irritation to the mucosa second factor is it decreases uh, prostaglandin and the prostaglandin is uh, in turn uh, the presence of prostaglandin decreases acid secretion and acts as a protective layer by increasing mucus uh, mucus secretion in the stomach since prostaglandin is inhibited um, the aspirin is ulcerogenic and uh, it is uh, harmful to the gi tract which is a very major adverse effect because of which aspirin is uh, being avoided in higher doses in recent days uh, it also causes allergic reactions uh, in certain patients like rashes and urticaria so allergy is not dose dependent so you should uh, ask for history of allergy before prescribing aspirin uh, it precipitates bronchial asthma uh, because uh, increased leuco uh, the all the uh, prostaglandins are uh, inhibited because of uh, cox inhibition and all the arachidonic acid available are used for leukotriene production the leukotriene increase will cause bron bronchoconstriction and in turn it precipitates bronchial asthma therefore aspirin is avoided in bronchial asthma patients Uh, it uh, it uh, precipitates hemolysis in the uh, G6PD deficient patients. Uh, it can also cause a nephrotoxicity and hepatotoxicity in higher doses, which is uh, when given for longer periods. Uh, and Ray syndrome is one other major. adverse effect of aspirin that is uh, in children with viral fever when aspirin is administered it can cause post viral hepatic encephalopathy this is one of the major uh, outcomes therefore it is avoided contraindicated in children with viral fever so uh, one two major um, side effects to see 
pregnancy and infancy what if uh, aspirin is given it causes a premature closure of ductus arteriosus uh, since we saw it is used in treatment of patent ductus arteriosus you should remember it causes the closure of ductus arteriosus therefore it increases portal hypertension in some cases and it delays onset of labor this could be a use as well as an adverse effect depending on when you administer salicylism is another uh, adverse effect higher doses when given for a long time in rheumat uh, for example in uh, rheumatoid arthritis it is given for a long time in higher doses it causes chronic intoxication of salicylate it may cause headache vertigo uh, confusion and other uh, symptoms which is together termed as salicylism um to conclude you should know about acute salicylate intoxication in acute salicylate intoxication when 15 to 30 grams or more than that is administered it is a fatal dose you have to treat by gastric lavage and iv fluids like sodium potassium and bicarbonates should be administered and blood transfusion is advised to our to treat acute uh, uh, salicylate intoxication uh, patient may intake uh, uh a uh, more than 15 tablets or th- 15 to 30 grams uh, with suicidal intent or accidental intake so this is the treatment uh, and uh, precaution and contraindication while prescribing um, aspirin you should avoid in peptic ulcer patients or liver disease patients since liver is the metabolic site for um, aspirin and in patients with bleeding tendencies it is since it is an antiplatelet drug viral fever in children you should avoid because it can cause ray syndrome and avoid in pregnancy and before surgery avoiding in pregnancy we saw the reasons and before surgery because of the antiplatelet effect the drug interaction uh, is mainly due to the competition for protein binding sites therefore when given along with heparin warfarin phenytoin other protein binding drugs plasma protein binding drugs it causes a toxicity of those drugs and the risk of bleeding when given along with anticoagulants so if the patient is already taking some other anticoagulants you should be careful to avoid aspirin for those patients so we saw about aspirin the prototype drug of nsaids in short and quick manner as possible so see you soon in the next video thank you